From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Oh my, these world headlines sometimes, if we didn't know the Lord and have the comfort of the Lord, we could be a little more upset and discouraged. But this first one really takes my breath away. Islam's goal, first Israel, then the world. My, 170,000 rockets and missiles threaten Israel. My, just think of living there and having 170,000 rockets and missiles. And then Pope Francis goes to Israel, and he's going to try to bring peace, and he's called the peace broker. So we'll be discussing all of that today. Well, you know, friends, we have discussed what we're going to be talking about up front here with you before. But because we do go around the world every week and have so many new viewers, we want to point this out very, very quickly right up front. It is uh, something that is happening now, and it's so important because it's the first sign of the coming of the Lord in showing that we are the generation. We are the generation. All right, take a look at this one, if you will, please. The Palestinian way back then post, State of Israel is Born. Now, of course, that it was 1948. Vignettes from Rosh Hashanah in Israel, 1948. Going on, Israel in Bible prophecy, the reclamation of the land. And, of course, they reclaimed it. They said it is Ours always has been. Then the Six Day War, 1967, they took Jerusalem. And here you see it again during the historic Six Day War, God fought for Israel and restored the holy city of Jerusalem to the Jewish people, June 1967. Look at how they are rejoicing there because that is a sacred place to them, Jerusalem. Now I'm going to ask Jack something here. This is also very meaningful because this had to happen before the Lord comes. This is the first thing proving that we are the generation that could see the coming of the Lord, Jack. Not only the first thing, but the main thing. This is proof that we are going home soon. Why? All right, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and bringeth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these signs in connection with Israel, the fig tree being in existence, that's when I'm coming. And he says, you will know when it's near even at the door through that sign. Not the day and hour, but I command you to know when it's near even at the door in Matthew 24, 33. All right. Now. Jesus gave a number of signs in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapters 17 and 21. Great signs. But Jesus didn't say, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, etc., that's when I'm coming. No, you've missed it. He gave this thing so solidly as to what two great signs would trigger all the other signs and when they were all happening at once. That's when it would be near, even at the door where you could hear the knock. Now, what are those signs? That Israel had to become a nation, and they had to control Jerusalem. They were not a nation for 2,011 years until 1948, and they did not control Jerusalem for 2,030 years until 1967. From then and then only, since the beginning, since Christ was here, 
Could Jesus return because all the other signs were meaningless unless they happened when they were a nation and in control of Jerusalem? And in 63 BC, a general by the name of Pontius went down and took the Jews from their nation and they've been in captivity under other powers all these centuries until 1948. Now let's prove it, Rexella. Show it on the screen yes, and yes. you read that for us. I see it right here. The foreign empires that ruled in Israel. Oh, this breaks my heart. He mentioned 63 BC to 313 AD, the Roman Empire. Then the Byzantine took over, 313 to 636. Here came the Arab nations, 636 to 1099. The Crusaders took it 1099 to 1291. Mumbled 1291 to 1516. The Ottoman Empire also took it 1516 to 1918. And here the British Empire 1917 to 1948 when they became a nation, Jack. How victorious is that? They were not always, uh, all that time, they were controlled. And Jesus would not come until there was a Jerusalem <laughs> controlled by the people of a nation called Israel. Think of it, 48, 67. Now, he said, when you see the fig tree blossoming. Now, how do I know you see that the fig tree is Israel? In Joel 1, 7, there's a war, and the Jewish people say, they have barked, stripped my fig tree. In Hosea 10, 9, it says, I saw your fathers as the first ripen in my fig tree. Israel is the fig tree. And they're now there. And Jesus said, when you see all the signs in relationship to Israel being a nation and Jerusalem being in control, that's when I'm coming. That's when it's at the door. Oh, you don't know the day and hour, but it's so near you can't doubt it. We are the generation, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm telling you, let's get into this just a little bit more. Well, before we do, Jack, I just want to say the Jews never gave up hope. They didn't give up hope. You know why? Because they had the Old Testament that promised them they would get their land again. Is that correct, Jack? Oh, amen, Rex Ellen. This is really exciting. The rabbis went by creation. And they said the world was created in six days, Genesis 131, and rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2-2. And then they took Psalm 90, verse 4, where a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And they said, every one of the creation days will stand for a thousand years and the world will go on 6,000 years and then Messiah will come and reign in the world. Who did that? Rabbi Akiba, Rabbi Bekai, Rabbi Elias, Rabbi Eliezer. But you say, that's the Jews. Our New Testament fathers for the first 400 years taught the six-day theory found in 2 Peter 3, 8. A day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. And since the world was created in six days, it'll go on for 6,000 years and Christ will come the 7,000th year. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just entered in history the 7,000th year. Another reason that we believe we're the generation, it's Bible prophecy. But this is really something. Now remember, a day is like a thousand years. Hosea 6.2. After two days, God will revive us as a nation. Two days, 2,000 years. He didn't say at 2,000 years. He says after 2,011 years. And that's from 63 B.C. to 1948. 2,011 years. Exactly. And then he said on the third day in the millennium, in the seventh day, the final thousand years of Christ coming to reign for a thousand years and then forever will be that great millennium when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords comes in Revelation 19, verse 11, to rule and reign for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4, and then his recommission, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and rules forever and forever on earth. Now, this was not only taught by the Jewish rabbis, but it was taught by the Christian church fathers for the first 400 years of the faith. Come on now, let's be fair. The first 100 years we had St. Barnabas, 
and St. Bartholomew, the second hundred years. We had St. Arrhenius and St. Justin Martyr in the third hundred years. We had St. Lactinius and St. Matthias, no getting about it. When you see all the signs in connection with Israel being a nation and controlling Jerusalem, that's when I'm coming. We're the generation. Mm, that's exciting, Jack. Now, I think you'll pick up on something. There's real hatred for the Jews over there. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But there is a movement to establish Islam, not only in that area, but worldwide. Take a look. Hamas minister first Israel, then the world. Russia's plans to help Iran worry Israel. Iranian MP, we need nuclear bomb to put Israel in its place. And here you see something Iran State TV presents missiles on Tel Aviv and Demona. Now that's where Israel, of course, keeps the nuclear reactor, so they're very concerned. The Ayatollah, kill all Jews, annihilate Israel. Iran calls Israel rabid dog as talks on nukes resume. And Arab states will never recognize Israel, a Jewish state. Jihad in Jerusalem. And Intel had 170,000 rockets and missiles threaten Israel. I cannot imagine how it feels to live there. Hamas, Israel has eight years left. Of course, that would be 20. 22. Hamas official will expel or kill all Zionists. Now, a moment ago, I made a statement. I'm going to ask Jack why. There's hate for Israel. Why? Why do they hate Israel so much, Jack? Because Yahweh God in heaven is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He loved the Jews. And because he so loved the Jews, First Chronicles 21, 1 states that, get it now, Satan stood against Israel. It's all demonic hatred by the devil and his fallen angels of Revelation 12, 4. And friend, it's not going to be a picnic. What Israel has to go through to become the victor and have Jesus sit there in Jerusalem and rule from Israel over all the world, it's not going to be Islam. It's going to be Christianity and Judaism combined under the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the prophet Jesus, the fake of Islam, but the true Jesus of the Holy Bible. Uh, they're going to suffer, yes. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 9, to the Jews, you should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. In John 16, 2, he said, the time will come that whosoever kills you Jews will think he's doing God a favor, Hitler and others. And today, many Muslim nations who hate the Jews. I've never seen a nation more hated. And Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great. There's none like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel. They changed their name to Israel in 2 Kings 17, 34. Daniel 12, 1 says, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And who's in trouble? The Jew. But at that time, thy people, the Jews, shall be delivered. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of this world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. Now, we Christians are the elect also. But he's talking about Jews here. They're the elect, yes. Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. And God is going to come for them. Now listen, you know why I know we're the generation? Because the whole battle is fought over Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that's the war of the latter years and latter days, Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8 and 16. There was no Israel. There was no Jerusalem until our time. We're the generation. We're going to say more about that in just a few moments from now. But, oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Psalm 126. They're going to pay a great price soon in the days ahead. The Muslims are saying, Jihad, holy war against the Jew. Wipe them off the earth. And this guy that calls himself a religious cleric in Iran says they're dogs and let's kill them all. Isn't that lovely language for a minister? of any religion. Mm. You know, you point out something there, Jack. And there there was the headline that I gave you, Jihad in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a cup of trimming. You know, the Palestinian Authority is encouraging the Jihad fighters, don't go to Syria, go to Jerusalem. 
that's what they want to take over. And you pointed that out, Jack, they want Jerusalem, don't they? Oh, sure. And that's why Zechariah in chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, calls it a, a burdensome stone and a cup of trembling. Oh, pray for these people. You know, Jack is encouraging my heart so much that we, you and I, we are the generation that is going to see the Lord come again. How wonderful that the Lord will stop all of this. He's going to bring peace on earth. Well, when Christ comes, there will be no need for a substitute because he will set up his kingdom in Jerusalem, Luke 1, verses 32 and 33. But I'm telling you, you're going to see some shocking things. The Bible teaches there's going to be a one world government and there's going to be a one world religion. And that's Revelation 13, 1. And this world leader comes to power and he creates all the nations going together, as we showed you last week, the 10 division world empire, the 10 toes of the image and the 10 horns uh, of uh, Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. It's here. We've got that ready to go. And in Luke 1, 32 and 33, when Jesus was born, the angel Gabriel appeared to that blessed Virgin Mary and he said, your son shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem and he shall reign over the house of Israel forever and forever and forever and of his kingdom to be no end. And I don't care Muslims or anyone else, you're not going to do away with Israel because Isaiah 56, 5 says, I'll give Israel an everlasting name. Now let's finish out here, Rexella. Show us what's coming. Going on here, please. And I'd like you to see the Wall Street Journal, U.S. tries to revive peace talks. We're trying. Mitty's peace talks. There you see Secretary of State uh, John Kerry. He's meeting with members of the Arab League. Kerry Planet, Arab capital in East Jerusalem. Well, look how they feel about it. Rabbis threaten Kerry with divine wrath. You can't have East Jerusalem. And then going on, Assad to Obama, draw a plan for Israel-Syria peace talks. Jordan's king discusses Middle East peace talks with Obama. President Obama to meet with Pope Francis. Whoa, oh. in March. And school lesson portrays, I can't get over this one, Obama as Messiah. New textbooks. And U.S. plan gives Jerusalem holy sites to the Vatican and Pope Francis to visit the Holy Land in May. And here, take a look. A new peace broker. Of course, he's going to Israel in May in peace to Jerusalem. Take a look at what he has around his neck. Of course, that is the lamb. Woo. Very significant, isn't it, Jack? I'll tell you, Kerry and Obama, President of the United States, you're in trouble because God has promised Jerusalem to the Jews 830 times in this Holy Bible and you're going against them. And I believe what the rabbis are saying will come to pass. You can't get away with it. We got a man in Revelation 13, 1, who is going to try to create the new world order, the one world government. And he has control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, verse 7, and all the world worships him. And he has the two horns of a lamb to identify him with Christianity. And here is this Pope going to Jerusalem in May and he's meeting with our president in March and they're going to set plans together and it could be the very thing for the one world government, the one world church and isn't it strange that the one pope who's going to make peace, others have gone there but they haven't talked peace, he's got a lamb on his shoulder, what's the sign? The two horns of a lamb because Christ is the Lamb of God, John 1, Wow, what a day to be alive. It's all coming to pass because when they come to power, it says they come in peaceably, they enter in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21, 23. And it's the covenant of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15. Why? Because by peace they destroy many. Why? Because they're saying, peace, peace, isn't it wonderful? But there'll be no peace, Jeremiah 6, 14, Jeremiah 8, 11. And when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction, Armageddon. And that, if you study it, says 18 times that they invade Israel and the war is fought over Jerusalem, and that is Joel 3, 2. It's here. And you don't have to wait for peace. You can have it right now. If you'll open your heart to the Lord as your Savior, the only way to heaven, the only way to heaven, accept Jesus as your Savior. And pray this prayer with Jack, please. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call Lord Jesus? 
Thank you for the cross. Thank you for shedding that blood to wash away every sin I've ever committed. Lord Jesus, today I ask you to come into my heart and save me so I can be with you forever. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? There's my address. Let me know if you did. First Steps in a New Direction will be in the mail, I promise, as soon as I hear from you. Isn't it good to have peace with the Lord in your heart? Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Revelation Rumblings. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Friends, please don't put it off. There's the 800 number and the address. Revelation rumblings. I hear it all the time with every newspaper I pick up. You need to have this in your home. So please call right away, will you? And now, where's your Bible? I want to leave you with a very good thought. The Bible is meant to be bread for daily use, not for cake on a special occasion. Look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.